is really going to take a community to bounce back from something like this. And I think the Memorial Day tornadoes really proved that Dayton can be strong mm -hmm. when faced with tragedy. But to have two of these as close as they were together is tough. Well, we were just discussing 2019 has been a, an unfortunate year, and that is a great understatement. And unfortunately, I can't find words. And I think that's something, you know, I woke up this morning and started posting about this on social media as you get the news. And I sat there because I just, there aren't words, there aren't thoughts. You can't, call, you, you can't fully wrap your arms around what has transpired and where we go from here. Uh, I did think when you were watching, if you were watching our newscast earlier, we had our legal or our safety expert on, excuse me, Bo Parsons. And the one thing that stood out to me, he said, don't stay away from this area. Don't stay away from the Oregon district because this can happen anywhere. And he said, live out of courage, not out of fear. And I think that is something that we all need to remember um, because this can happen anywhere. It, it certainly can happen. I mean, they've said that this was, you know, the safest area. We've seen this happen at, you know, bars. We've seen it mm -hmm. happen at churches. We've seen it happen in malls across the country. We saw it happen at a Walmart in El Paso, a festival. Hours ago. Yeah, a festival where people were out enjoying a staple of the community out in California. That's just a reality of our times mm -hmm. that we live in right now. It's a sad reality, but you know, everybody, I've heard it before. I, I've heard it from people before say that, you know, I don't think it would happen in my neighborhood mm -hmm. or my community. But unfortunately, we've been faced with the reality that it indeed can happen here. Absolutely. And again, our uh, local legislators have all been weighing in on this throughout the day, sending their condolences, sending their thoughts and prayers. And I know that's a statement that a lot of people at this point are saying we don't want thoughts and prayers. We want action. Uh, but for a lot of our legislators, or some of them at least, uh, we know Representative Mike Turner, his own daughter, was down there. So for him, this is a very personal mm -hmm. um, attack as well. We want to take a look at some of that, uh, what he had to say about it. Yes, I can. Um, uh, I saw your tweet just minutes ago. How's your daughter doing this morning? We saw that she was down in the Oregon District herself. She's doing fine, obviously, like the rest of the community. She's, you know, she's a mess and, and very emotional. Um, the um, I think this is certainly a time for the community to come together. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a tragedy and evil, but we really have to thank the police. My daughter reports that she saw immediately uh, the Dayton police running toward the shooting. Uh, they saved an unbelievable number of lives. Uh, our first responders are absolutely incredible. They are absolutely incredible, Congressman. And I know um, you have got to be very emotional from this morning because you went down there, um, according to your tweet, and grabbed your daughter and took her home. How no, are no, no, you? Actually, no, actually, she was with a family friend. I, I stayed on the phone with her. Okay. Um, the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine. They, she, they walked, uh, they made it out the back of the Tumbleweed Connection into the Oregon District. She called me immediately. Um, and they walked around the scene and then, uh, uh, you know, over to 35, back up to, to Main Street and then home. Uh, but, um, you know, I, of the unbelievable tragedies um, that, that, that occurred last night, we just unbelievable condolences to the family. How, how, do, you, how do you feel, uh, how do you think we as a community, um, I mean, I know this might be a little early, early to ask, but how do we move on? How do we grieve? Well, you know, I, uh, you know this, these are all so unexpected evil. I mean, it's unimaginable uh, from the, 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 the people who do these, uh, these terrible acts. Um, I think, you know, here this is an inst in instance where you know, I talked to the mayor this morning where the, the city of Dayton was diligent. I mean, my, my daughter reported that as she was going into the subway connection, the um, uh, police were already be across the street before the shooting happened. Um, you know, having police presence makes a tremendous difference, but we just really have to thank them because cause we're all um, worried about our families, they're taking care of our community. Absolutely. And Congressman, I know that you have to uh, head out this morning, but we want to just thank you for taking a moment to call in and letting us know how your daughter is doing. And obviously, um, you and her and everybody who was affected by this are in our thoughts and prayers. Obviously, this tragedy hitting close to home for Congressman Turner. His daughter fortunately able to make it out of the area as the shooting happened overnight. And you can find that full interview on Dayton 24 7 now. Dot com. And of course, as we hear from Congressman Turner there, we're going to be hearing from a few more politicians here coming up. Obviously, that was recorded earlier this morning, but you said you could actually hear it. And if you couldn't pick up on it, you could hear the emotion in his voice. I mean, this is not just Representative Mike Turner, the politician. This is Representative Mike Turner, the dad. Yeah, and you know what? As a father myself, I cannot do that.
Yeah, everybody wants to say. You guys, yeah, that's perfect. And then we're just wait, Senator Brown. You guys ready? Hello, this is Nan Whaley, Mayor of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I think this is our fourth press conference of the day, and I've seen some of you at every single one of them, so appreciate your diligence in getting the word out and getting uh, the correct information out uh, to from your news outlets. I want to introduce who's with me uh, this afternoon, uh, City Manager Shelley Dickstein, uh, U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown, U.S. Senator Rob Portman, uh, Deputy Chief Matt Carper, uh, State Representative Phil Plummer, and former County Sheriff and Congressman Mike Turner. Uh, so uh, I just want to take a moment to talk about uh, the outpouring of support we've seen across the country. Uh, today, uh, to, to, to moment, I think I've had over 70 uh, mayors and uh, from across the country reach out, particularly have been of help, have been Buddy Dyer of Orlando, who had to um, work with his community through the Pulse nightclub. Uh, Mayor Bill Peduto of Pittsburgh, obviously with the Tree of Life Synagogue. Mayor Cranley of Cincinnati has been helpful. And um, Mayor Jane Castor, who's the new mayor of Tampa, who is a former police chief. Uh, honestly, I have to say that ha unfortunately, because we have so many of these incidences, uh, there is a bevy of mayors that are able to give great advice and feedback. Um, I think that's, quite frankly, uh, a little sad if you think about it, that they've learned so much uh, because all of their communities have gone through these terrible um, mass shootings. Uh, but today at 2, uh, two o'clock, I was very uh, appreciative that um, Senators uh, Brown, Senators Portman, and Congressman Turner, as well as U.S. Attorney Ben Glassman, the FBI and ATF, came together for a briefing with Chief Beal and Chief Carper. We then walked to the scene of the, of the site uh, uh, in the Oregon District so the senators and congressmen could get a good sense of exactly what happened on the ground. And I want to say how much I appreciate their support and uh, their um, calls and what can I do uh, questions uh, during this day. Uh, it's been a lot to me personally, and I know it's been a lot to the, the citizens of Dayton. Uh, with that, I'd like to invite Senator Sherrod Brown to come forward and say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is obviously a terribly difficult time uh, for this community, and I so appreciate especially police and fire and uh, the rescue operations, how quickly uh, the police department, uh, the police officers on the scene so courageously stood up and, uh, and did the right thing and saved literally potentially hundreds of lives with the amount of ammunition the shooter had and how quickly they responded and how what a short period of time from the first shot um, to the last shot. So um, it really does tell me a lot about um, local public servants, police, fire, and rescue operations. We had uh, the mayor tells us 20, um, I believe 20, uh, 20 first responders from the region came, in addition to the six or seven from the city of Dayton, um, that arrived all within 20 minutes to save lives. So that's what that's what local communities do, which come together like this. Uh, the mayor took us all to, um, to walk through the Oregon district. Uh, it's the, it's in many ways the the, 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 the the center of Dayton in terms of of evenings and small businesses. Every single business in that area just about is locally owned and with the vibrancy of local ownership and what that means. And they're all coming together um, as they will tonight, the vigil. But for the next many days, the way the Dayton came together after the tornado. Um, and, and, and dealing with the KKK rally a few weeks ago. Um, my first talk with the mayor today, the first thing she told me, um, other than expressing the, the, the grief and the heartache of this community, was how, um, how she had gotten literally dozens of texts, emails, and phone calls from mayors around the country, almost all of whom have had something like this happen in their communities. And so our first our first response, I'll speak for myself, Connie's my first response, of course, is sadness and hearts and, and prayers and thoughts for families and the community overall, including police and fire and how they respond to this in the weeks ahead from the trauma that they've seen as public servants. My next thought was anger at our country and society and our Congress for not doing anything about this. Uh, the House of Representatives has, has passed 
a bill to do background checks, uh, overwhelmingly, bipartisanly. Um, I'm, I've called on Senator McConnell to bring the Senate back into session. Um, we can pass that in one afternoon, background checks. The President of the United States could sign it that day. Uh, there's just no reason we shouldn't be doing that. So we certainly pray for the victims and care about the victims, but Congress needs to do something. Our state legislature, again, woefully inadequate in dealing with gun violence, also needs to react and respond in the right way um, so that these incidents just don't happen week after week after week after week in our country. Thank you, Senator. Next, I'd like to inter uh, invite Senator Portman to come forward to say a few words. Uh, Senator Brown came from Cleveland, Senator Portman came from Cincinnati, and just completely amazed by people coming here to get here as soon as possible. The Miami Valley is in mourning today after the tragedy of last night's shooting. We did walk down to the Oregon District and we saw uh, what has been a thriving commercial section of the city and, and saw lots of great small businesses. We also saw workers in hazmat suits. These were EMS personnel who were having to clean the blood off the sidewalk tragedy of last night. Um, shocking. Shocking. Unspeakable. Tragic. Uh, we also have seen this community respond, as they will, for the victims, for the mothers and fathers and sons and daughters who were struck down last night and those who were injured. We've seen it uh, here in this community just since May with the KKK rally. We've seen it as this community came together after the devastating hurricanes, which, you know, is still an ongoing project, but I've talked to the mayor a lot about this, and Mayor Willie knows that I'm impressed with what I've seen is how this community comes together and responds. And we saw it last night with these brave police officers who, in the face of danger, uh, ran straight, in, straight into it. You'll learn more about this at 4 o'clock. And all I can say is, because we're not at liberty to talk about it, and I, I think it's appropriate that law enforcement provide the perspective that you need on this, but uh, this courage was extraordinary and saved lives, probably hundreds of lives, given the situation. There is also an effort going on in the community that I hope everybody will support, uh, which is through the Dayton Community Foundation. And it's called the Oregon District Tragedy Fund. It's a fund that's been set up to help the victims. Again, um, this community comes together. Uh, I'll be making a contribution to it. I'm sure everyone will behind me. And um, I know this community is going to come together and help these victims, those who are injured, the families of those who lost lives. So this is... Uh, this is a tragedy that requires that kind of response. My colleague, Senator Brown, has talked about legislation. Uh, we should also, of course, as we figure out what happened here, learn lessons from it, just as we need to learn lessons from others. And are there more things that can be done? I'm sure there are. But I will say there's something deeper going on here. And if you look at the suicide rates, if you look at the addiction rates, uh, this community has done a good job in responding to it, but it's been at ground zero in terms of the opioid crisis as well. If you look at the mental health crisis in our country today, there aren't enough laws, and in fact no law can correct some of the more fundamental cultural problems we face today as a country. And the shooting last night is an indication of that. So uh, I look forward to working together with my colleagues to try to respond the most effective way possible. But we also have to look deep into our hearts and figure out how could someone point a gun at someone who he had never seen or known and pull the trigger. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, next, I, I appreciate the Senator's donation to the, uh, the fund that the Dayton Foundation has put together. I know that our community comes together, and I know that this will be no different um, as the other uh, episodes we've had in the past few months. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Congressman Turner to come forward to say a few words. Appreciate him calling me this morning and appreciate uh, him being here as well. Uh, Congressman Turner. 
I, I want to thank the mayor for her leadership on this day of sadness for our community. Uh, this is a strong community, and I appreciate the mayor working diligently to pull everyone together. Uh, also, I want to thank and congratulate the, the mayor and the police chief on the police presence that was in the Oregon District uh, last night. Uh, it was extraordinary that they were able to respond so quickly. As a result of uh, the police's actions, uh, my daughter and hundreds of others uh, who were down in the Oregon District last night uh, are alive and, uh, and are safe today. Uh, I also want to thank the first responders, uh, the, the police and fire uh, who came to the scene and uh, responded unbelievably for our community. Um, this is an unbelievable amount of evil uh, that we cannot comprehend. Uh, I appreciate the mayor pulling us together for a briefing today on the investigation that's ongoing. We'll learn more about this particular case. Uh, but Senator Brown is absolutely correct, and as is Senator Portman, as we look across the country and we see this, uh, we need a national conversation as to how we come together on a bipartisan basis to address this. <clears throat> Legislation, culturally, uh, as a country. I thank the mayor for pulling us together and for her diligent work to try to find answers for the community and also for the work last night uh, that kept so many safe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, a state, state representative, we used to call him Sheriff, uh, Phil Plummer, uh, wanted to say a few words. Thanks, Mayor. And again, thank you for your leadership here. We've had some rough times in the city of Dayton, but you've really, you know, you met the challenge and you've led the city, so thank you for your hard work and your efforts here. I just want to let the citizens know you have a great police department, a great fire department here. You know, I went and toured the crime scene with everybody behind me here and I was hoping as my last crime scene I toured but we're back in action but walking away from that crime scene you know I could stick my chest out and I'm very proud of our first responders they, they answered the call you know they ran towards a gunfire you, you when you're up against weapons like that it's tough on those guys and they they made the call and they took care of business so thank them when you see them you know we can't give them enough wards because they they saved a lot of people last night Fire department, you guys did a great job. And our county dispatch center, they get overwhelmed with, you know, mass situations like this. So they did a tremendous job also. So, you guys, let's not just let this keep us down. Like I said, we had a rough year, but we always bounce back. We're a resilient community. Uh, we're in the game. We're in the fight. And um, we need to figure this out. So let me ask you guys this. I'm not going to get into policy discussions, but we, the people, make the call. We don't work for special interest groups. We work for the people. So let's sit down and let's figure out a solution to this. You know, it's mental health. It's guns. There's a lot of variables here, but we got to figure this out. So, you guys, thanks for covering this, and let's stay strong, Dayton. We're in the game here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I, uh, uh, Deputy Chief Carper will come forward to give any new information he may have. I think it'll be pretty brief since we will have such a detailed uh, briefing at four o'clock. Yeah, thank you, Mary, and thank you uh, for everyone's patience. Uh, we do have um, uh, a comprehensive look at this uh, coming up here at 4 o'clock. Uh, the only thing I will add uh, right now, uh, we do have a, a lost and found that's going to be established at the safety building downtown, 335 West 3rd Street. That's the City of Dayton Police Department headquarters uh, beginning at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. There were a lot of items uh, that were left in the Oregon District, so if you could uh, uh, spread the word to the public, if any items were left, uh, they can come and retrieve those beginning tomorrow morning. Thank you. All right, questions? Is there a word that you would describe uh, the people of Dayton? I mean, you guys went back to the tornadoes, the KKK rally, <laughs> this. I heard the word resilient, uh, resiliency. Is there something that sums up the spirit of the people that live here? Are you asking me? Uh, anyone who's willing to answer. Well, I will answer, and then anyone else can answer. Uh, the, the, the word I use for Dayton is it has grit. Uh, and I think that that is a word that describes what is... Uh, uh, this community has been through for the past 50 years, the grit of uh, the changing economy, uh, the grit when tough, tough things happen, they come together. There's resilience and grit, but um, I think that that is what makes us so strong and continues to make us resilient. And so uh, I'm pr I think that that describes Dayton and its people in a way that um, I'm very, very proud of. I think our best. And then, uh, you know, we talked about the reaction, you know, how, how the first responders really came mm -hmm. uh, to the need of everybody there. A lot of after the fact, we talked about mental health and then, uh, you know, gun violence, but is there any way to proactively prevent something like this from happening? You see it time and time again, uh, but, you know, this is a question for anybody, but is there a way to pro proactively prevent it from happening? Anybody have a comment? 
you know, we need to do what's right. You know, if a civilian's walking around with body armor, we call that clues. So, you know, why does a civilian have body armor? You know, if somebody is not acting right and they have high-powered weapons, reach out to them. I mean, they, we all know when somebody's having problems. We have to be a community and support people. Let's start doing what's right. You know, you, I watched some of the news conferences from the shooter's neighborhood, and they kind of said the guy had some problems. But we fail to step up and do what's right and address those problems. You know, the guy may need somebody to help him out, give him a hand up. So, you know, if something doesn't seem right, make a call. Call the police. That, that's what we're here for. Call us. You know, we have professionals here, counselors. You know, if it, if it isn't right, just reach out to us. The former sheriff said that uh, sort of questioned civilians wearing body armor like that, wearing those vests. Um, ballistic vests, and I, I say the same about civilians buying assault weapons. We we try and experiment in this country from the mid-90s to the mid-next decade for about 10 years of a ban on assault weapons, and it didn't, didn't get every assault weapon off the street, but it did make a difference, and there are probably hundreds, if not thousands, of people alive today that might not have been alive if we hadn't passed, if we hadn't had a law. Uh, prohibiting the purchase of assault weapons and uh, those weapons don't belong they're, they're not weapons for hunting uh, we don't question people having a gun to hunt we don't question people having a gun uh, to protect themselves but um, the civilians carrying assault weapons and it just again speaks to the courage of the police department with pistols or um, other weapons but nothing like taking on a guy with an assault weapon and why do we put our police in that situation too where where civilians carry these weapons of war uh, and uh, it's it's an unfair match by by any stretch Senator Borman. 2019 rain, there's going to be a mass shooting tomorrow and another one the day after and every day this year. You mentioned earlier in your comments that you're sure something more can be done. Do you have a day in mind or a week in mind of having a plan, something to address these issues? Well, as I said earlier, I, I think it requires a comprehensive approach because the tragedies you're talking about, each is different. And we don't know all the facts here yet, but what we do know, um, which I've seen in public reports, so I can I can say this: uh, he shot his sister. Uh, we know that in a short period of time, and you'll find out the exact period of time at four o'clock. I won't tell you, but I'll just tell you in that short period of time there were there was a burst, and I've seen public reporting on that as to how many shots were fired. If that's true, that magazine, of course, would be illegal. So there's a law. So do we need more laws? Yeah, we probably do. And we did just pass something last year in 2018 to tighten the background checks. And I think there's a consensus now that we need background checks to make sure the wrong people don't have access to weapons. You'll learn more at 4 o'clock about whether he would have been caught up in that background check or not. Uh, but my point is, it's not just about laws. It's about something deeper. And mental health was, recent, uh, was mentioned earlier. Um, we have a crisis in this country. There's no question about it. You know, people have talked about uh, the depths of despair, and they, they talk about the suicide rates, they talk about the addiction rates, and they talk about the mental health issues that are causing some of these. So um, this is a broader discussion that needs to be had. And, I, I you know, I hope that when we get back, uh, we will have that discussion. And. We'll have it at the state level. We'll have it at every level. But we also have to have it in our communities and in our homes and in our hearts. And former sheriff, now Representative Plummer, talked about that. You know, in almost every one of these cases, there is, as you look back on it, some indication of a mental health problem. In some cases, actually, there have been investigations of individuals that unfortunately did not result in that person you know, being treated the way he or she should have been. I, you know, Parkland's an example of that. We don't know in this case yet enough. But again, from public reporting and, and what former sheriff, now representative, just told us, um, there were indications apparently. So how do we, how do we, in terms of prevention, how do we actually identify those individuals, get them the help they need, which is mental health treatment, which is sometimes with these red flag laws and other things to literally 
keep them in a situation where they can't harm others. Uh, sometimes that means incarcerating. So there are there are needs for us to look at this on a, on a broader basis. Senator Turner, you've, you've been working on this issue obviously in Congress, but can you talk? I don't know how come we are talking about how not only does it this one hit home in your hometown, but obviously with your family as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Well, Senator Portman was saying this is a very difficult a legislative issue. Uh, that's why I think we need a, a, a national conversation. Uh, the legislation that was passed in the House that's currently pending in the Senate would not have affected this situation. Senator Portman pointed out that the, in, in Ohio also, the magazine that was used um, is, is already illegal. Um, there, there, there has to be, though, a legislative, a broader conversation where we can find where we can have, have an impact. I think what the sheriff is saying is also incredibly important. And if, if there's a neighbor or a friend um, who, who you believe poses a, a risk, uh, take that first step. Um, the, um, uh, if it is, uh, it's unthinkable for us how, how quickly our own families become uh, so at risk. And this is why this is so important for us to pick up the phone, say there's a problem, uh, say that, the, that there is an individual who appears to, to not only um, be a threat, but perhaps have weapons or caches to the extent uh, that, uh, that they have nefarious intent. Uh, I think that the, the former sheriff, uh, Sarah representative, has a, has a great um, call to the community uh, that um, if you see something, say something. Thank you. To what extent is okay, we're gonna we're gonna unknown? take like one more question. Yes. To what extent is the shooter a known entity, the law enforcement or community leaders? Uh, you know, do you have an arrest history? Anything along? The yeah, we'll present that at four o'clock, and I think we're uh, actually getting yep. uh, ready for the four o'clock briefing. Uh, so rather than uh, put you off to four o'clock, maybe we should okay. put it off to four o'clock and so we can present what we have and that will answer a lot of questions. And I just want to thank uh, the senators and congressmen for coming this evening and this, this afternoon and appreciate and I'll see you guys at four. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.